What is up gang and welcome back to another episode of Inspired By. My name's Will and I make an assortment of music under the moniker Hush Child. I asked you guys over on Instagram what you wanted to see this week and a bunch of you asked for Tenno, a familiar face from the Lo-Fi Girl record label. And boy did I have my work cut out for me this week. I thought I'd be completely transparent with you guys and as has been the theme in previous episodes, I just don't get it right first time. first idea did not land anywhere close to the mark that it needed to be. It didn't have that classic tenno sound and that was mainly because I was kind of lazy on the sound selection element. This second idea on the other hand did get us closer to the inspiration for this third track. Now with that idea, I was closer to the sound. You can see the labeling on the right hand side of the screen was similar to what you're gonna see in a minute, but I knew from the start that the melody was just all off. I wanted to start from scratch with some of the same sounds and create a whole new melody section. So without further ado, let's jump into the version that I think I got right. You can see here on the right hand side, I really did try to take care of note taking. I was listening to my reference track, which is Tenno's most recent release. And I was noting down just as audio tracks at first, what I could hear. So originally this was kind of like back and forth piano or maybe just piano. And then I had an undertone. And what I meant by that is some kind of synth that is just kind of bubbling under all the instruments, especially at the beginning. It's in a lower octave, therefore given a darker feel. This blue highlighted region is when I've pitched it up an octave so you can hear it a little bit better. I had the right hand piano, which what I mean by that is the left hand normally plays the bass, the right hand normally plays all the twiddly bits. So the right hand is just kind of doing the solo that you hear later on in the song. And we'll come back to that. Mid-tone meaning the left hand or anything that's really gonna take up that mid region of the frequencies. Again, we'll look at it later on. So I took care of these notes and then started filling that out. The first thing that I started with in this example was a sample that I got from a song by In Love With A Ghost. It's called We've Never Met, But Can We Have A Coffee Or Something. It's a bit of a mouthful, that one. I'm such a big fan of In Love With A Ghost. And the original tune sounds like this. I just don't have the piano skills to replicate that. So I figured, why don't I sample it? So what I did is I took it and pitched it down minus 11 semitones. And then you can see here, I chopped it up. So this is what we're working with at the beginning of the song. After that point, I was just using Valhalla Vintage Verb and an EQ8 to get rid of all of that muddiness. There is quite a lot of automation in this project, as you can see. So, you know, screen cap that and kind of dive into it in your own time. It is fairly important to capture in this sound because you're gonna want certain levels to be quieter at different times or more rolled off at different times. So you can see the EQ changes with the piano sample at the beginning of the track up here and becomes more high passed at bar 17 and even more high passed at bar 33 where we are now before rolling back down at the end of the song. It just helps the mix of the song sound a little bit brighter with more clarity when the darker instruments come through like the cello that we're gonna look at later. So at the beginning of the track, we just have that back and forth melody. But later on, I really bring in Shaper Box, which is just pumping away, kind of muting that first downbeat, which gives it this feel. Which allows the kick drums and anything on the downbeat to really come through. The first thing that I had after that initial sample was the undertone, and it just sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
So let's see what was going on on the undertone track, which is just this little serum preset I made, kind of a low pass sine wave with a little bit of an attack there so we don't hear the initial pluck sound. And I'm using the Waves H delay. You know I love the H series from Waves. It's just adding a little touch of blurriness to the sound. So it sounds a little bit wider, it sounds like it goes on for longer than it does. So I'm using it on 16th delay, but as you can see, I'm pretty much high pass in it and meeting it with that low pass. So there's only a small frequency that is being delayed there. But then we had the right hand piano and that's very simple at the beginning of the track. Super easy. I'm doing that with the decent sampler or the claustrophobic piano, a free instrument from the piano book. So this is wonderful. I use it all the time. Can't believe it's free. It's such a nice, intimate piano sound. And I've just increased the kind of pedal noise there. So you get a little bit of that intimacy of the piano. With the mid-tone, again, I'm using the same piano with a slightly different mix on the Valhalla Vintage Verb there, slightly different EQ settings as well. But it gradually becomes more washed out with the EQ8 down here before being muted completely. So again, it's all about automation in this track and add into a little bit of realism. So let's have a look at those four instruments at the beginning of the track and then skip to later in the track and see how they've changed. Lovely stuff. I hope you can hear the difference there. The main reason that it's so high passed in this region is because at this part of the song, we're going to have so much activity from the strings and the bass is playing much more of a major role. So let's jump to the bass. It's very simple. It's just a sign like bass. You might not even be able to hear this if you don't have headphones on. Just playing G, F, D, G, F, D again, but that D is in a higher octave later on and played a little bit late. I noticed only in the introduction to Tenno's latest track that he had this kind of bubbling string section. It sounded like it was being played through maybe something like the microcosm perhaps that I've got in the background. So we tried to replicate that by using two labs stringed instruments and just freezing and flattening them in place. They're super quiet in the mix. So I'm gonna use a utility to just boost the gain up a little bit. Very simple, and you can kind of hear the vibrato that we've got on there and the Valhalla Vintage Verb, just a small amount of mix 13 there. And I'm using a line delay on this first layer that you're listening to, just to make that first set of strings sound a little bit wider. With the second set of strings, they're doing a little bit more. I'm actually playing a chord there with the G, D and the higher octave G. But as you can now appreciate, I've actually got them so quiet in the mix. And as you look down this right hand side of the screen, of course, the strings are being automated as are the levels for almost every element minus the percussion in this track. Okay, so before we go on to hear those signature flute sounds and kind of finish up this production, I wanted to tell you very quickly about my friends, DistroKid. They've been kind enough to sponsor this episode and I use them with almost every release that I put out. DistroKid make it so easy to get your music on all of the streaming platforms and they have this fantastic tool called Splits. Recently, what I've been trying to do is release one new track every other month with a member of my Discord community. So I used Splits with Dark1720. I'll be using Splits again at the end of this month with Thalio, and it's just so easy. All you have to do is make sure that their email and name is part of your collaboration, and everybody gets a fair split of the revenue to the track you're releasing together. So if you are thinking about releasing some music later this year, then make sure you use the link in the description below because you'll get 7% off your first year. All right, so finally on to the exciting bit. 
You don't have to use opus or the east-west strings that I'm using. Truth be told, I'm just trying to get my money's worth before the month is up. They're a fantastic string library. If you're looking for realistic sounds from all over the globe, they're definitely the ones to go for, but I just don't understand how anybody affords 35 pounds a month. Not knocking them at all. East West, if you want to sponsor a video, I would be more than happy to use your samples more often. You can get away with the effect that I'm going to show you with the free labs instruments above or, you know, any preset sound. I would try to go with something more realistic than just a cheap synth string because you'll get something that sounded like my first example. We're starting off with the East West cello. And I'm playing a melody that stretches over eight bars. So that kind of loops over. The next instrument that I bring in is actually a flute. And again, it took me a few attempts to get this right. I was playing far too much at the beginning before I settled on another simplistic pattern. I'm automating the EQ8 just so again that breathiness of the flute isn't the main characteristic that you hear. So it dips down towards this point before jumping back up on those two passing notes. Let me show you a bad example of something. Originally, what I wanted to have was this serum instrument. I've been really enjoying this pan flute woodwind sound that I made in serum. I thought I could add it, but this is an example of bad sound selection. I've got all of these lovely realistic sounds with such character, and then I was gonna add this. Let's put that amongst the mix and I'll show you what it sounded like. There's just too many melodies going on, but I did try to keep it low in the mix and use it as a backup to this instrument. So as you can see, I've got that same pattern, very, very low in the mix as I mentioned, and it just backs up this first flute that you've heard here and a higher octave too. So it's again, just one of those mix cutting techniques that should aid, you know, hearing it through small speakers. Then we've got a nave flute, same pattern again. So again, another timbre to that collection of sounds. Like the other instruments, I'm just using a little bit of Valhalla and the EQ8, no automation on this one. And I thought at this point I was happy with what I'd created, but I noticed in Tano's track when going back to the reference material, he had this slow rise and decay of just the string chord as well. So in a much higher octave, I've just got these triads playing, but they are only playing the D, so just an octave up and octave off again, to the G to finish off. And this is what the automation looks like on this one. It's kind of a crazy one. Just rising up halfway through the bar and then dropping back down and then easing in on this G chord here. That subtle duck there kind of acts as a natural side chain, so it's quite fitting for this section of the song. So after this point, I found it quite easy. That was all the melodies. That's the hard bit done. After that, it was just the drum selection, which I actually took from the second example. So same drum sound, we've got the Esther kick, which I love using. On the Esther kick, we're just using the EQ8. We've taken all the mids out because we already have so much mid activity in the track and this kick isn't gonna play uh, alone at any point, so no harm there. We're also using the shaper box to give that kick just a little bit of noise. I have a whole episode on noise use with Cable Guy's shaper box, and there's a link in the description if you wanna grab any of their gear as well. So without that shaper box, we get a very hollow kick. And with the shaper box, we get something with a little bit more character. Here are the snares, which I'm really happy with. You can see there, that I was just taking out a couple of the harmonics that I didn't enjoy. And we're using OTT to just, again, bring out the character of the snare group that I did enjoy. So more of the mids 
and less of the lows. Utility to keep those snares in mono and reduce the gain just a little bit. And then shape a box because it was just a little bit too bright. And I noticed with Tenno's most recent release, the snare almost sounded like it had this side chain activity every time there was a hit. This is what the snare sounds like without the side chain. With the side chain. So it's almost like a transient shaper. We're just taking the edge off of the attack. With the snare group, I'm using three samples here. I've got this OS pot snare. We've got this rim shot. I haven't even bothered mixing or adding any effects to these rim shots, they sounded fine. And then the JViews one has a little bit of a roll off on the lows, a little bit of a bright roll off to the highs. As a recap, those together sound like this. We've got some hat foley, but nothing too crazy. Just a downbeat and an offbeat foley sound. Just an EQA, a little bit of a line delay, so it sounds a little bit wider. With the utility on the second foley sound, again, just to bring the gain down and change the balance a little bit. And then finally, just choose some nice sound effects. I went for a walk and heard so much bird noise early in the morning the other day. So I figured I'd keep that quiet in the track with a little bit of EQ8. I'm side chaining all of the foley and noise sounds to keep them low in the mix. We're using the cricket sound and we're keeping that super quiet in the mix. So I've actually pitched my cricket sound as well because otherwise it's gonna be a constant key that sounds a little bit out amongst your melodies. And then finally, some vinyl crackle that I've just looped over in a little bit of a repetitive rhythm. I've assigned the LFO to this side of the frequency of the EQ8. So again, you're getting a rhythm with that little sample that I've taken from the blank vinyl but you're also getting a little bit of movement inside the filter itself. And then a sidechain compressor, as I've mentioned, with all my textures. So that's pretty much the whole tune. Let's have a little listen to it in its entirety. So there we have it guys, that was my take on Tenno. It was a bumpy road, it took me a few attempts to get there, but how do you think I did? Be honest. And what do you wanna see in future episodes? Don't forget I'll have a bonus episode coming out on the Patreon this week as well. Some of you wanted to see a kind of behind the scenes of this little studio space that I have set up. It's not perfect, but I have a lot of tools at my disposal and I try to make use of this whole space. Don't worry if you're not part of the Patreon, there's still a kit.co link in the description below that will list all of the tools that I use in this room and it will take you to Amazon as well if you're looking to make a purchase. So do check it out. As always guys, if you haven't liked and subscribed already, it greatly helps out the channel. So I hope you'll just give a consideration to clicking that button. For now guys, I thank you so much and I'll see you next time.